Well, I'm joined now by our panel, former Labour Party President Mike Williams, newsroom political editor Joe Moyer, and Fran O'Sullivan, who is head of business at NZME. Tēnā koe, uh, welcome to the programme. Good morning. Good morning. I want to start on the sort of big story, I suppose, in our programme, but also this week. Um, we have a new police minister. She is the fifth in ten months. Joe, that's disruptive, isn't it? Yep, disruptive is definitely accurate. Um, it has bounced around a lot, and I think you've also seen there's been an attempt to mix it up a little bit too. Obviously, things changed a lot when you had mm -hmm. Porter Williams come into the role. Uh, then it got thrown to the Mr Fix-It because stats had got so bad, so of course uh, Chris Hippens came into that space, and then he decided to take it back to that Stuart Nash, but more sort of um, saying it how it is, um, that sort of more hardened um, response. Ginny's completely different. Um, I actually have been impressed with her so far, She's mm. done a lot of live interviews this week and she's actually held her ground and, sh and she's mostly across the topics as well. I think where she's lacking is, um, you know, the sort of how are you going to do that and, and how is it going to fix mm. that? But in terms of sort of what the focuses are, um, she's, she's kind of nailed that so far, I think. Mm. Yeah, and those are tough qu qu questions to answer, aren't they, after just a few days in um, the role. Mike, how do you rate her performance so I, far? I think she did very well. Uh, she's been chucked in at the deep end. She does have a background in policing, which comes out. Her, her husband was a cop uh, for a long time, but not for 12 years. She worked for the police department. She knows what she's talking about, and I don't think you were able to trip her up at all. She did well. <laughs> youth crime though, that's her focus, right? So this is a mm. big area for the government and the election is in October. That's not a lot of runway. Right, well youth crime overall is, is dropping and it has been for some years. But is it? However, well that's the question you asked her. However, I think it, it came up during COVID and that's ki because kids were stuck at home uh, for ages away from school they got together and they did naughty things I think that will pass and I think Ginny made that point too that this is not a typical situation you're looking at and now we're getting back to normal I think the numbers will carry on declining uh, friend this is a big issue isn't it it's certainly a big issue for businesses out there and for people who are on the front line i suppose of ram raids for example and the, do you think that the government we, we need to see more from the government in this space more from Ginny? i think we need to see more frontline police and i say that and she's she's indicated that uh today but i but i also think we had police out during uh COVID, uh protecting the perimeter mm -hmm. of auckland they weren't mm -hmm. actually protecting what was happening inside auckland and now people have come back in. Um, I'd be hoping, particularly talking about Auckland, that the new commander um, actually responds to what people have been wanting in Auckland, and that is to have, you know, roving police stations, you know, mini bus type things around the place, which other cities do internationally. Mm. Uh, you don't see many people walking around, and I have been in a city resident here for the best part of two decades, mm -hmm. and there's been a big change. Mm. Uh, in relation to the ram raids, it's a big issue for um, small shopkeepers in particular, but not only that, because it's also been affecting uh, malls as well. And, um, and people have been killed and they've been damaged, you know, they've been physically hurt. So there's a physical vulnerability there for small shopkeepers. The Indian community in particular, very exercised about it because, you know, a pathway to a sustainable lifestyle uh, for Indian immigrants has often to been to do the corner store, put their kids through university, and everyone works in the store as, as well. Mm. But now you're seeing one of the things that does worry me is this revision in the police statistics um, just a week or so ago, yeah, which numbers. suggested they'd been understated by a huge amount. So what's going on there? I think we need truth and tell from the police, to be honest, where they actually front up on this so you can see the magnitude of the issues and then deal with it. We need to know the size of the problem. Absolutely. Um, um, I want to talk about Winston Peters a little bit there. His speech yesterday, Mike, you would have seen a few of these in your time in I've politics. Seen a lot of them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> what did you think? I thought there was lots of familiar themes in there. A familiarity uh, breeds contempt, and um, <laughs> it, it was a very familiar speech. There was nothing new in it at all. I'd hoped for some blockbuster statement or policy. Uh, the attack on wokeness, well, everyone's doing that. He's in a lot of company there, and a lot of them are doing it a lot better. 
Uh, I was very disappointed because he can be extremely entertaining on his day and he just wasn't. Well, you, yeah, I can think of other speeches by Winston Peters that have sort of been like lightning rods. and Indeed, they have... and the one in Howick um, yes. uh, some but, years ago. But, but this was not that, was it? He was sort of feeding the chickens here, wasn't he? Feeding the chooks a little bit of this, <laughs> anti-mandate, a little bit of that for you, wokeness, you know? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the same lines, um, a lot of the same jokes as well. I mean, in fairness to him, yeah, it still gets labor. a laugh. Yeah. Yeah, manual labour, always a favourite. Um, yeah, I mean, you just saw a lot of the same old, same old, and I guess his argument is that it is new policy because it hasn't been picked up yet. But, you know, when you've been hearing about it for more than a decade, I mean, is it really new mm. policy? I would argue it isn't. But, I mean, coming back to Mike's point too, I, I just think it's a difficult space at the moment because when you look at the Parliament makeup at the moment and you look at uh, the direction and the sort of momentum behind the ACT Party at the moment, mm. they've got a lot of more MPs you know, they're fighting in the same territory and that's hard for New Zealand First when they're not in Parliament. You don't have the resource um, that you have when yeah. you're in Parliament and having that sort of machine behind you, I'm not sure whether the machine behind New Zealand First at the moment is the same nature, same people and mm. has the same ability to get them back into power as last time he was out. Yeah. So it's going to be a bit of a, an uphill climb, I think. Yeah, well, I, I was thinking about um, a national act in New Zealand First Coalition, Fran, and I thought that might feel a bit like a bar fight. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be hard to put a break on <laughs> and break on next time round. I think what's, and Joe picked up on an interesting point, um, others are already occupying the space. Mm. Mm. and But what I think it does do perhaps to the benefit of National and Act, is it amplifies the message. Mm -hmm. It actually has someone saying in a more retail way, this isn't good enough, um, talking about, um, you know, range of issues around education, back to basics, Winston puts it in a colourful way. Mm -hmm. National Party's already uh, put out a policy in that area this mm -hmm. week. And it, it kind of, you know, it just, if you're sitting out there, you're hearing this from multiple uh, directions it might tell you actually there's an issue here uh, but I think the point about David Seymour and how he is um, incredibly well resourced with this extra million of mm. um, high ticket rich people who have banged in um, sizable donations just and you know, it's just come out in the last um, a day or so um, the, you know Winston Peters once used to get um, sizable donations yeah. as well and you know he said there was sort of issues around you know how he didn't get back at, in the last election because of the issue around the SFO um, which um, uh, mounted an investigation uh, which um, you know I have to say um, the party and others came through that okay yeah. but I wonder what the effect might be on what sort of money they might attract mm. through whichever avenue this mm. time round. And that is really important when you are running a campaign and you are running up against these uh, the mm. platform that politicians have. Even Question Time works out to be extraordinary, uh, like very yeah, good for look, David Seymour. From a political party president point of view. Mm -hmm. Piles of money in a campaign are not that helpful. We are a very well-regulated democracy. Mm. You can spend only what you're given on radio and television, and it does not pay to be to appear incredibly wealthy in a campaign. It's a big put-off. So I, I think well done, David Seymour, mm. for hauling all that money in, but it's not going to do a hell of a lot of good. People vote on personalities and policies rather than money. Well, Winston Peters has plenty of personality. We know that. Still waiting <laughs> no. for the policies. Um, we did see some policy, though, this week uh, from National. We saw their education policy, and, um, I mean, I think it was received pretty well. Yeah, I mean, if you take out the likes of the New Zealand Principals Federation oh, and the yeah. NZDI, then yes, it was right. received well. Um, I mean, let's face it, though, those unions um, are reasonably linked with mm. Labour, and I feel like whenever National puts out an education policy, the instant reaction is to go, oh, don't like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, I think it was definitely the best policy that National has put out um, so far. I think it is something that's important to Christopher Luxon. He has spoken about education and, and his concerns mm. there the entire time that he has been leader, and you can tell that it's something he feels very deeply, passionately concerned about. Mm. Um, and that really showed, I think, both in his speech um, and, in, and in the policy. Um, it just comes down to this sort of debate, though, about whether you want to go back to a very structured classroom or, or whether you want to keep what the classroom is now, which is a little bit more loose. Mm. Um, I think there's arguments for both sides and, and probably there's somewhere in the middle that needs to be found um, and we just probably haven't quite got there yet. Yeah. One solution... Sorry. Yeah, no, just on that.
that, I think, um, you know, the figures show um, education-wise we've slipped down OECD rankings. These things are important. I mean, if you've got parents who are very mindful of their kids' education, they can steer them, they can get them into schools where they have exceptional treat, uh, teachers and an mm. exceptional focus on bringing up kids in a certain, certain way. But... You know, these basics actually are important. Um, you know, you see it now, I mean, you even see it in our, our industry where younger people actually are not grammatically that brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's not true. Me you're no, about. no, yeah. you're not I, young I enough. A, <laughs> a point yeah, here. Right. Yes. Um, Fran is quite right. We're <laughs> flipping down the OECD ratings when you look at 15 year olds. Mm. Now, a 15 year old's formative reading and writing mm. learning period was under national. They created this problem with their national standards and what they are trying to do is revive that. It doesn't work. You can't rigidly tell teachers what to do. We're too diverse a society for that. Let me um, reveal that I spent the first six years of my working life as a school teacher. So I was absolutely incensed at this policy and the fact that people didn't notice that it was national who largely caused the problem we're now dealing with. Well, there's plenty of time yet before the election. Uh, Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Mike, Joe, and Fran on The Nation this morning. I